Well, it's Friday, and what better way to end the week than in the company of Nigeria's veteran entertainer and political activist, the colorful, controversial, combative, unrestrained, bold, perhaps harmlessly dotty, but hugely famous Charlie Boy, a public figure whose life has been nothing short of adventure and adrenaline. Over the years, Charlie Boy's maverick spirit has drawn many people in, with his critics accusing him of disruptive behavior, while to his supporters, he's a celebrated protest singer and change advocate known fondly as Area Thada. But in the last year or so, many of his achievements and pronouncements, both in music and in politics, and that boundless energy which he used to relentlessly attack officialdom, appear to have been overshadowed by a withering bout of sickness. So how serious is this? And how much has his celebrated public life been blighted by ill health? I'll be joined from our studios in Lagos by the inimitable Charlie Boy. Now, let's get lost in the kaleidoscope, firebrand world of Charlie Boy and what a controversial, colourful figure he is with those flamboyant costumes and that rustle of satin and sequins that heralds his arrival at an event. He is, after all, known to be a great lover of publicity. But he's also an activist, campaigner, and a lifelong advocate for good governance, well known for his social media political orations. And many of his supporters speak enthusiastically about his fighting spirit, his unwavering courage, and his liberal instincts. But suddenly, in that prime, he began to suffer from serious illness. First, in the last year or so, he was struck down by a diagnosis of prostate cancer. And then came COVID. But he says he's managed to overcome both. So, having experienced immense difficulties and emerged through the flames at the other end, what is his frame of mind today? Has he lost some of the shine and sparkle and passion that he's come to be associated with? We'll hear from the self-styled president of frustrated Nigerians in a moment. But first, here's one of his more recent protest songs. This one's called Nigerian Matters. And that's just a little taste of some of the protest music of Charlie Boy. And I'm suitably delighted to say that Nigeria's ultimate maverick entertainer and veteran political activist Charlie Boy joins me now from our studios in Lagos. Charlie Boy, it's so good to see you and good to see you actually up and about because I was very worried and concerned, but oh, I, I'm glad yeah. I'm glad to see you've got that. <laughs> just that what you just said now it just tells me <laughs> that you're you're back in shape. We will talk yeah. about your personal life um, and health and all that in a moment, okay. but we're just looking at that video, Nigerian Matters, which I believe came yeah. out last year, just before the elections. Oh, come on, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, you know, I'd, I'd want to talk actually, about that. Actually, it's Nigerian Matter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, it's Nigerian Matter, not Nigerian Matter. Yeah, but you have to... Nigerian you, you, Matter. Yes, I, I can see <laughs> that, but you've got to remember that we have an international audience, and you have a lot of fans outside Nigeria as well. Okay. So they want to be able to understand yeah, what you're doing. they better start getting used to our lingo, Charles. <laughs> yes, they better start getting used to our lingo, Charles. Okay. Yeah? That's well, let's not, let's, wrong. Not, let's not mm -hmm. dwell on that too much. <laughs> that, that, that song came okay. out last year. I mean, what was your frame of mind yes. in putting it together? Okay, um, Charles, you know, I'm a baby of the early 50s. And I think during the Nigerian Civil War, I was uh, about 18, between 18 and 20 years old. So I was, uh, I was a matured youth. I knew what was going on. I knew what was happening in my environment. And I must say that that war scandalized my youth, okay? And uh, 
I knew all the preambles that led to the Civil War, okay? And it seems to me that in the present time, since the past three, four, five years, the same things are playing out. The obnoxious bigotry, the, the religious nonsense that has been going on for a long time. After the Civil War, yeah, but before I go there, the war, we lost the war to hunger. We lost the war to poverty. That is people on the Biafran side. They lost the war to hunger and poverty, not because of the bullets. And guess what, Charles? After that civil war, no matter what you had in your bank account, whether two billion or 100 billion, you were only given 20 pounds to start life afresh. And I, I started to see some of those dynamics playing out in the present. It was before our very eyes that somebody said, we will continue with the previous government's policy and we will continue from where they stopped. What does that mean? That we, are, we have seen Shege, we are going to see Shege Bansa. That's how I interpreted it. But nothing prepared me personally for what was about to happen on February 25th. But my conclusion was the fact that I've seen it's the same playbook, I've seen the same, the same criminals, you know, doing the same thing from the same old playbook. And then of course the bigotry, the tribalism was at its peak, it was horrific. There was no time before February 25th that I expected somebody from just a fresh new party that was just going to come from somewhere and win. I wasn't expecting that. And I did tell some of my few friends that I know that this thing is not going to go the way a lot of people think it, it was going to go. But I was not prepared for the kind of bloodletting that I saw, the kind of bigotry, the kind of tribalism. Even me, Charlie Boy, I was accused of <laughs> of being a bigot, you know, me, Charlie Boy. Right. Yeah? So I put all of that together and I felt that, uh, no, it's the same thing, but uh, I was not prepared for the height of such corruption, such bloodletting, such hatred. I've never seen that before. Yeah, so but, but obviously, I had a feeling uh, that uh, it uh, wasn't going to go right. 